We, the members of the Black Caucus, stand here again today disappointed in our former Vice, Vice President's comments. We understood on the debate stage that he had reached out to Senator Arputlian and that Senator Arputlian had apologized. However, none of us have received phone calls telling us that. None of us have heard this supposed apology by Senator Arputlian and all of us understand that that is in fact not the case. We stand here to express our disappointment at former Vice President Biden not disavowing the comments that came from Senator Arputlian. Again, disparaging one of our members, suggesting that it is wrong for one of our members to be a political consultant, suggesting that one of our members had done something, if not illegal, then at least unethical. We stand here today again, members of the Black Caucus, disappointed that Vice President Biden has not done more than he has. What we wanted was for him to disavow those comments and talk about the fact that Senator Arputlian does not not only speak for him, but says something different than what he believes. That didn't occur. He simply brushed it off and said that Senator Arputlian had apologized to him. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not enough, and that is why we stand here again today. We are asking that the Vice President understand that we, the Black Caucus, are not going to take it anymore. We are not second-class citizens. We are capable of doing the same work that our white colleagues do. Vice President Biden didn't seem to recognize that. Senator Arputlian seems to have a problem with it, and we're demanding more. We are demanding at this point that Vice President Biden make a public statement that he is not going to have anything to do with Senator Arputlian or the money that he has raised or the money that he has given. It is not just about whether Senator Arputlian may have told him in a private conversation that he is sorry. It's about showing that he's sorry. It's about showing the African American population in South Carolina that we are tired of the politics of old. We are demanding more, and that is why we are back, and we are sorry that it came to this. Any questions? I mean, so, uh, former Vice President Biden is going to be in South Carolina tonight. The way that you guys plan to try to speak There are members of the Black Caucus that have, in fact, endorsed Vice President Biden, and I'm sure that they will speak to him. And listen, we are all willing participants in this process. If he wants to call and talk, we'll listen. But what we want to hear from him is that the comments that came from somebody that has supported him, whose house he's been to, whose house he's used to raise money, that he is not going to take those comments nicely, that he is not going to sit idly by while they're said, and that he's going to return any money that Senator Arputin has given. Um, if I may ask, uh, several members who are several presidential candidates often say that black voters, black people, are taken for granted in the Democratic Party. How does this debacle sort of reflect that? Can you explain? It seems to lie directly at its feet that all of a sudden, a, an African-American member cannot be a political consultant when, again, we've had several white members that have done exactly that and nobody complained, including Senator Arputlian. And when the idea was brought up to Vice President Biden, he said that it was enough that Senator Arputlian had apologized. Well, it's clearly not enough. I don't think it's enough for the African-American population in this state, and we'll see on Election Day. But it's clearly not enough for the Black Caucus. Senator Joe Biden will actually be in South Carolina as you know, the polls with us are coming in from New Hampshire. Do you plan to reach out to him? Do you plan to talk to him? We reached out last week when we made our position clear as a caucus. We didn't hear anything back. What we heard is that he was willing to talk to, Mike, to Senator Arputlian, but not to us. It was disappointing, and that's why, again, we stand here now. On Wednesday, uh, the Vice President's campaign uh, issued a statement saying that Senator Arputlian didn't speak for the campaign or on behalf of the campaign. What do you think about that? I don't think we were confused about that. None of us ever believed that Senator Arputlian spoke for Vice President Biden. But we wanted to hear what him speak for himself and say that the comments were beyond the pale, the comments were reflective of a society that we don't live in anymore, and that the comments were about a friend of Vice President Biden's and they should never have been made. That didn't happen, and so now we're asking for more. We want to make sure that Senator Arputlian's influence will not be in the Biden campaign, not just that he doesn't speak for them, but that it is money that his money is not welcome anymore. Uh, several people, several politicals will say that there is a quote-unquote firewall of black support of Joe Biden in South Carolina. This is coming at a time when now the caucus is split on how they feel about our bullying and comments. How does this reflect how he's doing with African Americans in South Carolina? Well, we, have, we, we will see that on Election Day. We were disappointed as we watched a Democratic senator stand in front of the cameras and basically say that he wasn't a racist because some of his best friends were black. And again, for those comments not to be repudiated by the former Vice President of the United States was disappointing at best, was disheartening, but again, 
it was said about a friend of the Vice President, Jerry Govan, Chairman of the Black Caucus, a known friend of the Vice President, and the Vice President could say nothing more than he had accepted the apology of Senator Arpudu. That is not enough. And again, that's why we stand. Are you looking for other presidential candidates to come out and speak on this? Again, this is an issue that anyone is free to speak on. Whether they're a member of the Black Caucus, the Republicans, we don't care. What we understand is that if someone is allowed to be a political consultant by law in this state, by our ethics laws and by the laws of this state, then Senator Arpulian is wrong to say that just because it's Jerry Govan that that's wrong. So that's what we're looking for. We didn't get it last Thursday. We express our disappointment, and that's why we stayed here. In addition to the House Black Caucus, the Black Caucus of the state, we also have with us the Black Caucus of South Carolina, Johnny Cordero standing. Um, but just to play devil's advocate here, there are people who are sick. Who said this is not about her. You know, Tom Steyer, the billionaire in the race, is using his privilege, his money, to invest significantly in South Carolina in ways that other Democratic candidates are not. And that, you know, even uh, Joe Biden yesterday and this morning was talking about that he's worried about South Carolina, the fact that Tom Steyer is spending so much money. So what would you say to, to that criticism that this is about her? If, if that is someone's criticism, I would tell the rest of them to step up. That if Tom Steyer is investing money in the South Carolina, that is what the process is about. That is what everyone should be doing, investing money in South Carolina. We encourage that, and those people that are opposed to it should simply get out of the way. And if they have a complaint, they can bring it to us. What we encourage is investment in South Carolina, in its politics, and its people. If that's what he's chosen to do, then so be it. That is not what this is about. This is about comments that were made about one of our members that we objected to, we stated that objection, and that we received nothing back from Vice President Biden. Thank you all. Todd. Thank you. Yes, very quickly, I'm Johnny Cordero. I'm the chair of the Democratic Black Caucus in South Carolina. And I'm here for two reasons. One, and equally important reasons. My first reason is that I want the world to understand, I want South Carolina to understand, that we stand fully in favor of whatever the South Carolina uh, Black Caucus, Legislative Caucus does. There will be no more driving wedges between our people. These are our representatives, and as Democrats died in the war, we stand with them always. And the second thing I want to say to you, to, to, to make sure that it's not misunderstood, we, African Americans in South Carolina and in the United States, are experts on racism. We know it when we see it. And I'm telling you, when we see the things that have happened here and all of this controversy, what we see is an attempt to take down African Americans who are in support of our issues and what we do. That will not happen, and so let the word go out that the African American vote is not going to be rented and it's not going to be bought. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You have endorsed Tom Steyer. What I would have. you say to those who um, are skeptical and say that this is a ploy to split African American support to get more people to support Tom Steyer? I have endorsed Tom Steyer. That's, there's no secret about that. But for the reason that, that Representative Rutherford stated so accurately, and that is when, we, when all of the candidates, I'm not talking about Tom Steyer alone, I'm talking about all the candidates, when they came to South Carolina, I told them all the same thing. You got to go into the black community. You got to reach the people. You got to spend your money. You got to put your money where your mouth is. If you can't come into us and spend money with us, and you spend money with everybody all over the country, you're insulting us. So when you come, you come on and you come right, and that's how you get our support. But you don't buy our support. You get your, our support by being empathetic, by understanding the things that affect the African community, American community, and speaking up for them not only to black audiences but to white audiences. And I endorse Tom Steyer because he's the one that's doing it. Are other candidates not? I'm sorry? Are other presidential candidates not? Are you, are you not at the same level? Not at the same. level that Tom Steyer's done. Tom Steyer's got over 90 uh, on the ground working folks in South Carolina. And these are all black folks. These are folks that, every, that, that are here from areas where they work within 10 miles of the areas that they're out canvassing and organizing. They're doing it. They're spending money with black publishers. They're doing everything that you will do, dare I say it, they're doing everything that you do in the white community, only we're saying you're going to do it in the black community or you will not get our vote. Thank you.